Hi, I'm Lottie Jones. I am the ESS Nutrition and Wellbeing Officer. So we run these monthly wellness webinars to cover lots of different uh, topics within the health and wellbeing agenda. And today, as you're aware, you have all joined and we will be talking about fair trade. So I make it about two minutes past two, so we will get going. So as I've mentioned, you're all here to learn a bit more about fair trade. So this is what we will through today so we'll be talking about um, what fair trade is and understanding the aims of the partnership the impact of fair trade um, and how it can benefit farmers and workers looking at different types of products which are produced we'll then be going into where you can buy fair trade and different brand and retailer commitments and then just what you can look out for when you're shopping and how you can bring fair trade products into your home so starting with what fair trade is Fair trade is an international movement and it's in partnership with over 2 million farmers and workers. So, as I've said, it's an international movement and they have a vision that all producers can enjoy secure and sustainable livelihoods, being able to fulfil their potential and also being able to decide on their future. So they have different standards and these are split up into social, economic and environmental standards. Um, and the aim of the fair trade movement is essentially they work directly with farmers and workers to give them those choices. Um, there's things, there's a, um, there's one thing called the fair trade minimum price, which I'll talk about on the next slide. Um, and overall, they just try and drive awareness to the public. One of the ways in which they do this is fair trade fortnight. So that's why we're speaking about this in September. So fair trade fortnight is a two week period in September where people are encouraged to pick up fair trade products and speak up for fairer trade. So that's one of the things we're doing here is talking about the movement and hopefully some of you will be able to go home and see if you've got fair trade products in the cupboard or maybe you pick some up when you're next in the supermarket. So then just talking about fair trade minimum price. So fair trade minimum price essentially defines the lowest possible price that a buyer must pay the producer um, and it's set via a consultative process which includes the farmers, the workers and the traders and essentially it's put in place to guarantee the producer receives a fair price for um, for their crops um, and also for the money that they've had to put into growing their crops. Um, however, when the market price is higher, the trader must pay the market price. So essentially, it's making sure that the producer gets a fair price for all of their products. An example of fair trade minimum price in practice was um, in 2023, it was actually increased. So this helps to strengthen the protection for the coffee farmers all around the world. And then another thing which is called um, the fair trade premium. So this is where an additional sum of money goes into a communal fund um, which farmers and workers both have access to um, and this premium can be used to help either improve social, economic or environmental conditions um, and how it's calculated is based on a percentage of the volume sold um, and this can vary product to product but also across different reasons. So for some products, um, it must be used for a specific purpose. So all quinoa farmers must invest at least 30% of their fair trade premium into environmental sustainability. Um, and just showing you how much in practice, so cocoa farmers receive an extra $200 per tonne of cocoa beans they sell. So obviously that is um, a large sum of money which they can put towards good use um, and help to improve the conditions that I mentioned before. So then just a bit about the fair trade timeline. So you can see on the slide I've put um, together a loose timeline. Basically it started in 1992 and this was um, to help with fairness in trade from Mexican small scale coffee farmers. They were finding that um, the prices weren't very fair, so they wanted to put something in place which would establish fairness across the trade. Um, and then in 1994, the first fair trade products were certified under the fair trade um, mark. And then 
I mentioned earlier one of the ways in which they try and spread awareness is Fair Trade Fortnight. So actually the first one started in 1995. So um, kind of from the beginning of the Fair Trade movement. Um, I know sometimes in schools they run um, events and also in the workplace as well, kind of highlighting different products. So that's what we're trying to do there. And then I just put some of the firsts for different products. So in 1998, the first Fair Trade Honey was launched. Um, in 2000, the first bananas, which were fair trade, came to the UK. Then in 2003, there were the first fair trade oranges and grapes launched. In 2004, there was the launch of fair trade flowers and wine. And then in 2005, fair trade cotton was launched and new products are being launched um, after this. I just thought I would put those on as the beginning so that you could see the products which were started um, being certified when the movement took off. So then just a bit about the impacts of fair trade. So I split these into economic, social and environmental. So we'll start with the economical side um, of the benefits. So obviously I've mentioned the fair trade minimum price. So this helps individuals become more secure and also less vulnerable to poverty, essentially giving them um, more money so that they can kind of put this back into training or um, into producing more products and just overall have a higher quality of life. Um, it also empowers communities to be able to negotiate a higher price if they know that what um, the pricing should be, it can allow them to negotiate and hopefully get a higher price and something that's more fair as well. Um, but that fair trade minimum price is in place just to make sure there's no exploitation of prices. And then it can also Another benefit is improving access to agricultural services. So this could be things like organic training um, or premium markets, allowing farmers to farm better and also to sell more as well. And in turn selling more, they'll then be able to make more money and put this back into their farming. Next are the environmental benefits. So with fair trade, there's been a reduction in energy and greenhouse gas emissions and also improved soil and water quality. So when the farmers are receiving um, more money for their product, this means that they don't need to be over farming um, and reducing the quality of the soil. So they're able to produce um, products and kind of keep that quality of the soil. So that's really important for the environment there. So obviously if land is over farmed, then there don't become enough nutrients in the soil and then nothing can be grown on there, which is something that wants to be avoided. It also um, prevents um, genetically modified organisms and also harmful chemicals being in the products and being used in the growing process. Um, and then the last one is providing access to finance and support for tackling climate change. So that's another important one there. So some of the um, money is going into tackling those issues. Then lastly, we have the social benefits. So um, fair trade gives farmers and workers control over their future and also supports workers being able to realise their rights. So a lot of farmers and workers didn't know that they were entitled to certain um, privileges. So this kind of helps them realise these rights. Um, another thing is workers who are employed on fair trade certified plantations receive investment into education, but also better housing and schools and medical facilities. So this can help to improve the quality of the lives of the rural communities, not just the farmers and workers, but the communities that they live in. So then just a bit about farmers and workers and products which are produced. So I mentioned that there's about two million farmers and workers across um, the world who are part of the fair trade certification. Um, and this is across about 71 different countries. So it really is spread far and wide across the world. So then I've just got some common fair trade products. So most of these you might be aware of, um, but they include cotton, we then have gold, so this picture of gold mining, tea, so um, tea plantations, tea leaves, that's what that picture is showing. Flowers are another common fair trade product. Sugar as well, so that is sugar cane, which is the natural form of sugar, and then cocoa as well. So then just a bit about some of 
um, the products in a bit more detail. So the first one is bananas. I'm sure you've all seen fair trade bananas in the supermarket. So these are produced in tropical regions and employ thousands of people um, in countries like Latin America, the Caribbean, Southeast Asia and also West Africa. And it's estimated that about a fifth of the earnings from the Windward Islands which part of the Caribbean are from banana farming. So that's a huge amount of income coming from banana farming alone. Then cotton, which I showed you on the previous slide. So this is actually the world's oldest commercial crop um, and cotton farming involves about 100 million rural households across the globe um, and 90% of those are from lower income countries. Um, so you can see why it's really important for those farmers and workers to be part of the fair trade movement to make sure that they're getting a fair price so that they can support their families and their communities and households. Um, and in total, there's about 350 million people um, working in the cotton sector. So this is everything, not only from the growing, but also through the supply chain as well. So that is a huge number of people. Then wine. So South Africa is the largest producer and about um, accounts for about two thirds of fair trade wine sales. So again, that's a large, that is two thirds of the total fair trade wine. So that's huge coming from South Africa. Um, and the fair trade minimum price aims to cover small wine grape farmers average production costs. So production costs are included as well. Some product range has grown in recent years due to the demand of fair trade products. So there's lots of new products coming today. So obviously I mentioned the first ones coming in in the 90s, but there are still new products being launched every year. So now it includes a wide variety. This can be things like dried fruit, vanilla, different cereals, also nuts and oils as well. So there are lots of different products that you can um, purchase which are fair trade. So then just some 2023 statistics, which I thought were quite interesting. So workers on fair trade certified plantations allocated 75% of um, their investments to social investments and 15% to financial benefits. And then on small scale producer organisations, they invested about 36% into improving production and farming practices, and then 23% into financial benefits for farmers. And almost two thirds of fair trade coffee and bananas was also organic as well. So that's a good link there. So I've talked to you a bit about where what fair trade is and how it can benefit farmers and workers, but what about where you can buy it? So in the UK, currently about a third of all bananas sold are fair trade. And there are lots of different brands which have made commitments over the years. So here on the slide, I've got five. This is just a small section. Um, this is just when I was researching, I thought these ones were interesting. Some are quite old now, so it shows kind of how um, prevalent fair trade has been in the UK over the years. So in 2012, Maltesers um, went fair trade in the UK. In 2008, Tate and Lyle Sugar became fair trade. In 2009, Cadbury's um, became fair trade. Then in 2018, Nespresso launched fair trade coffee pods here in the UK. And then in 2017, Ben and Jerry's launched a range of non-dairy ice cream, which was fair trade. So I believe before 2017, their dairy ice cream was fair trade or some of it was. But in 2017, it was the first um, non-dairy fair trade ice cream to be launched. So as you can see, there are a wide variety of products, obviously, um, they would come under cocoa, sugar and also coffee as well. So then just looking at some retail commitments here. So in 2008, Starbucks went 100% fair trade on all of their espresso based coffee. In 2006, Greg's committed to using fair trade coffee. In 2002, um, so 22 years ago now, Co-op converted all of their own brand block chocolate to fair trade. Um, Marks and Spencer's committed to fair trade tea and coffee in 2006 and Sainsbury's launched 100% fair trade bananas in 2007. So lots of other retailers also providing um, fair trade products and have got their own commitments, but those were just a few that I thought I would highlight. 
So then in 2023, UK sales of fair trade products generated about £28 million in the fair trade premium for farmers and workers. So that's a huge additional benefit that they can use to um, put back into their communities and into their farming. And also in 2023, sales of fair trade cocoa products grew by 6% and they grew by 5% for tea, so there is an increase in people purchasing fair trade. So then what can you look out for? I'm sure some of you are familiar with this fair trade foundation logo, so this is what you can look out for on different products and makes it really easy to spot. If I go back a few slides, you will be able to see it on the products that I've got on the screen here. So on the Cadbury's chocolate bar, you've got it in the top right hand corner um, and also um, on the Maltesers as well. Um, so yes, that is a very easy way for you to be able to spot um, whether a product is fair trade or not. There are then lots of different own brand products to choose from. So it's not just the big brands, but a lot of supermarket own brand chocolate, like I mentioned with Co-op, they're all using fair trade. And if you look out for this mark, it does make it a lot easier to spot. There are almost about 5,000 different fair trade products available. So you should be able to find some in the supermarkets that you shop in. Um, it's not just um, a few supermarkets now, all retailers should have fair trade products. You can start by um, trying to purchase some products like tea or coffee or chocolate as they're the most popular. Some supermarkets now only sell fair trade bananas, so that's another one that you can look out for as well. Um, and there was a survey done and about 86% of people do trust that fair trade mark. So that's what you can look out for when you are shopping for yourself. So hopefully that's given you a bit of knowledge about fair trade. It's a word that you've probably heard spoken about quite a lot, but often people don't know the history behind it. So hopefully I've given you some of that history and it makes you interested to kind of go away and learn more about that. Um, and also being able to bring some fair trade products into your home. So um, purchasing them, knowing that the money is going directly to the farmers and workers and benefiting them, which of course is really important. I'll do before any questions is I'll just run through the other support that we offer. So as I mentioned, I am part of the nutrition and wellbeing team. So we can be booked to come and give different educational talks on site um, or at your specific unit. We can also deal with personal wellbeing queries and book one to one sessions. So if that's something you would be interested in, you can email that email address that is on screen. Um, that's something um, that's specific to you. We can kind of book in a call and see where we can help you and hopefully direct you and um, point you in the right direction. Um, and we can also support health fairs as well. Um, we don't have to carry out things in person. We can also give virtual solutions as well. We then also have our seasonal magazine. So for those of you that received the um, link to this webinar directly through your email, you will also be on the mailing list for the seasonal magazine. So we produce these quarterly throughout the year and they cover um, lots of different topics on the wider health and wellbeing agenda. And we try and get personal accounts from people across the business as well. If you have been forwarded this link for the webinar, um, do please email us directly so that we can get you on the mailing list. Um, we only send out the link to the webinar once a month and then also the magazine as well so that you won't get bombarded by emails, but it's just good for us to see who is signing up to these things. And then lastly, um, the wellness webinar. So you're all here today and this will get uploaded onto our YouTube channel at a later date. Um, do go and have a look at our YouTube channel. There's lots of different topics which have been covered um, and they've all gone up there if you have missed any sessions. Uh, already this year, we have covered topics including digestive health, we've covered heart health, and then last month we were looking at reducing our plastic waste. So yes, lots of different topics to appeal um, and have a look at. So what I will do is I will come out of this screen sharing and see if there are any photos, any questions, sorry, and any, um, if you do have any questions that you don't want to answer in this session, you can just drop us that email. So I will, will leave that on the screen. 
but thank you very much for all joining this afternoon i hope you all, all have a good rest of your day and hopefully i will see you on next month's wellness webinar so yeah thank you very much for joining and speak soon bye